Welcome to working on or about the railway track. Hi, I'm Alan Simons, and over the next couple of minutes, we'll be taking a look at the West Rail network. Working on the track can be dangerous, so it's important that we take a look at some of the safety measures required to work in this environment. We'll also be talking to some of the West Rail people. But first, let's take a quick look at the West Rail network. The West Rail Railway system services an area of nearly a million square kilometres, or at least twice the size of America's largest southern state, Texas. The West Rail network is unique among most systems in the world. Most of the area it covers is sparsely populated, but rich in minerals and commodities such as iron ore, bauxite and grain. These bulk commodities, along with general freight, make up most of the traffic on the West Rail system. The network covers the whole of the Southwest Land Division of Western Australia, from Geraldton in the north and west, to Esperance in the south and east. The network is divided into five districts. The eastern district is centered on the goldfields town of Kalgoorlie, the main commodities transported in the district are iron ore, nickel, and oil. Kalgoorlie is also the gateway to the West Rail network for the freight trains from the eastern states, as well as the Indian Pacific Passenger Service. Kalgoorlie is also linked to Perth with a daily passenger service known as the Prospector. There are more than 250 train movements each week which are handled from Meriden. The adjacent central district is centered on Northam, which handles all the traffic in the southern part of the wheat belt. Up to six million tons of wheat feeds through Northam each year, as well as all the eastern states traffic. Northam controls more than 300 train movements each week. The Northern District is headquartered at Nangaloo, near the port of Geraldton. The main traffic consists of wheat and mineral sands. This is control. Roger. Thanks, Gary. The Nangaloo Control Center handles more than 100 train movements each week. The Southwest District is controlled from Picton, just outside Bunbury, and carries the most diversified bulk freight traffic of any of the regions. Wood chips, alumina, and coal. The southwest main between Bunbury and Perth carries the Australind passenger service twice a day in each direction. Picton handles more than 350 train movements each week. Western Australia's capital, Perth, has its own district, which is controlled from the train control centre on the fourth floor of the West Rail Centre. The majority of train movements are on the city's technologically advanced electrified suburban rail network. Then there are the Indian Pacific and Prospector, which come and go from the East Perth passenger terminal. The West Rail Country passenger network is complemented by a luxury road coach service. The electrified suburban network itself carries minimal freight traffic. Most freight movements in the Perth district come through Northam, where they are directed to either the freight terminal at Kewdale or the port of Quinana. Perth Train Control Centre controls these movements and those of trains between the bauxite mine at Jarradale and Quinana and liaises with the train control centres at Northam and Picton. Altogether, there are in excess of 6,000 passenger and freight train movements in the Perth district each week. There is not only West Rail traffic that uses the track, but other traffic too, such as the Hotham Valley Tourist Railway and the National Rail Corporation.
With all these traffic movements and the heavy tonnages being hauled by the bulk commodity freight trains, there's a constant need for maintenance and upgrading of West Rail's track network. Now, this means that there'll always be people working somewhere on the line. And most of these people are contractors. The Railway Act includes a set of safe working regulations. Now, these rules govern everyone working on the railway, including emergency services. The Railway Act provides for penalties for failure to abide by these rules. The ultimate penalty, if you're involved in an accident, can be the death penalty. An iron ore train such as this weighs more than 4,000 tons and can take up to two kilometers to make an emergency stop. Even an electric suburban train, which can come up on you swiftly and silently without you noticing, will take more than half a kilometer to make an emergency stop from 110 kilometers per hour. The electric trains, known affectionately as emus, and the prospector have been aptly dubbed by work gangs as the whispering death. Everyone who works on or about the track must follow the established safety procedures. They are in place for your safety. The main thing working on a track will be safety first, which will be looking after each other and abide by the rules of a safe working book. Whenever you are on the railway reserve, you should wear your safety footwear, high visibility vest, and appropriate safety headgear for the situation. First, let us examine some aspects of the railway system as they relate to those working on the track. The railway line as a whole is often referred to as the permanent way. It consists of the earthworks, drainage, structures and track ready to accept traffic. The track itself consists of rails, sleepers and fastenings laid out on the formation. The formation is the graded surface on which the ballast is laid. Ballast acts as a flexible cushion which allows the weight of the train on the rails to be spread over a wider area. The sleepers are partially embedded in the ballast and are either made of wood, concrete or steel. They hold the rails in correct alignment by means of different types of fasteners. Turnouts, or points or crossings as they are sometimes called, enable the movement of traffic from one track to another. Then there are many different types of structures along the permanent way, such as signals, signs, bridges, cabins, and station buildings. The West Rail network has both single and double track workings. Most of the network, both in the city and the country, is narrow gauge. But the interstate line to the eastern states is standard gauge. Here in the Avon Valley, the two gauges run together as what is known as dual gauge. Actually, this stretch of dual gauge track stretches from Northam to Quinana and is the longest stretch of dual gauge track in the world. At the moment, Fremantle is behind me. The track on my left takes the trains going away from Fremantle and is known as the Down Main. The track on my right here carries the trains going towards Fremantle and is known as the Up Main. Most of the West Rail network outside the Perth district consists of single lines. On these lines, up trains and down trains travel on the same track. Crossing loops spaced at strategic distances allow trains traveling in opposite directions or even the same direction to pass each other. Before work commences, the supervisor must obtain from the train controller a train information form giving all train movements through the section that is being worked. Where there is a high density of trains, they are controlled by colored light signals. In low density areas, the train movements are controlled by train orders, which in remote areas can be issued via radio or satellite communications. All train movements and access to the permanent way are under the authority of the train controller. Each of the five districts has its own train controller. The train controllers communicate with the train drivers, 
and personnel on the track. And in the electrified area, also liaises with the electric control officer, or ECO. The ECO is stationed at the train control center in the West Rail Center and is responsible for the overhead power system and, when necessary, coordinates emergency isolation procedures in the electrified territory. The uh, electrified area is determined by concrete masts which support steel work, which in turn support the overhead traction equipment, and anywhere you have these uh, con concrete structures which are all numbered uh, is to be uh, classified as an electrified territory. Well, this is a general support mast we use in our system and the parts of the uh, system to be considered live and dangerous at all times, uh, you see the two insulators out onto steel tubes. So from the back of those insulators, the steel tube and all the wires attached to it are to be considered alive and dangerous at all times. And at the back of the mast, you see a mushroom shaped insulator which carries a return conductor that is also to be considered live and dangerous at all times. The electrified area stretches from Midland in the northeast to Fremantle in the southwest, and from Armadale in the southeast to Currambine in the northwest. At each of these termini, electrification extends into sidings. The overhead traction wiring equipment is live at 25,000 volts. Accidents involving this sort of voltage are nearly always fatal. For their own safety, people working in the electrified area must comply with the requirements of the safety instructions for the electrified area. Moving any equipment, uh, as far as trucks are concerned, they must maintain a minimum of a metre clearance. Um, if they get onto the back of a truck near the overhead system, they must not go above the floor. And also, if they're using a crane or, or any kind of machinery, a loader or something, they need to uh, have an isolation. As far as manpower working on the track, they're, they're safe to do any, any hand work with uh, shovels and picks and bars and so forth like that. With a work gang working on the track, they need to be aware if the traction rail is broken and the traction rail is identified with blue paint at every structure. Uh, they also need to be aware of any bonding that may be broken, particularly a red bond. Uh, the red bonds indicate that if they're bro broken, they're potentially dangerous, so if they come across a red bond, they're not to attempt to touch them or do anything to them. Contact the ECO who will get the uh, overhead people out to repair them immediately. Well, here we are out on the track with the work group, and uh, as you can see, everyone here is wearing the high visibility safety gear. Now, your safety on or near the track is dependent on your own observation and knowledge of train movements. Always look in both directions, not just from the anticipated direction of the next train. Never step onto adjacent lines without first checking for approaching trains. Do not walk along or stand on the rails. When crossing tracks, always step over the rails and always be on the lookout for whispering death. Never cross a bridge or walk through a tunnel without first knowing the time of the next train and locations of emergency escapes and refuges. Do not stand or sit on or place hands or limbs under a rail that is being lifted. Be careful when working near electrically operated points or associated moving parts. They move quickly and without warning and your hand or foot can easily be crushed or severed if trapped in the path of moving components. Clothing can be caught too and stop you moving to a safe area from the path of an oncoming train. Never put a metal object across the rails, as it may short out a track circuit and affect signalling equipment. It is also extremely important that the track leads and track lead connections to the rail are not damaged or removed, as it will interfere with signalling operations which could endanger lives. Signalling cables buried underground are identified by cable markers such as these. 
Every effort must be made not to damage or remove these markers, as the exact location of cables must be easily detected by people working on the permanent way. These devices are known as transponders for the automatic train protection system. Care should be taken not to stand on or interfere with these devices, as damage will affect train operations. When you are out on the track with a work group, one person will always be given the responsibility of being the lookout. The lookout's job is to alert everyone of approaching trains or other rail traffic. When you hear the alarm, you must respond immediately by raising one arm to acknowledge the signal, then move off the track immediately. When required, other lookouts will be assigned to make sure you follow the main lookout's instructions. Each group of workers should have a supervisor or person who is in charge. His or her responsibilities include the implementation of proper protection for the work group. The supervisor must understand the rules in relation to the work being carried out. It is the supervisor's job to appoint one or more lookouts as required. Some work groups will have a flag attendant stationed on location. Anyone making hand signals must use flags during the day or lamps at night or in foggy conditions. Only use your arms in daylight in an emergency. A flag attendant must be qualified in the flag attendant's course. Detonators are another warning device. When placed on the rail like this, the train wheels set them off warning the train driver of a hazard on the line that requires them to stop immediately or slow down, depending on the number of detonators used. These detonators are explosive devices and as such are dangerous. Only qualified people are permitted to handle them, as per the Book of Rules. Westrail often transports dangerous goods on the network. If ever you find yourself caught up in an emergency involving dangerous goods, you must remember your own safety first, then the safety of other people. Report promptly to the train controller, who will advise the appropriate authorities. Warn everyone in the vicinity and keep everyone clear of the danger area.